we're going to look at the distribution of times for races in the Kentucky Derby. And we've got data ranging from 1875 until 2007. So we're going, these are the winning race times for the Kentucky Derby. Uh, one way to visualize this data is with a histogram. But in order to make a histogram, I need to count a bunch of stuff. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you how to define bins and find your counts for various uh, um, data in the histogram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new sheet. I'm going to call this sheet time analysis. You can see I've already got one right here, so I'll just call this time analysis 2. And what I'm going to do is come over and copy the data from C. I click on the top part right here. It selects everything, and then I copy and paste it right into column A. Now that I have all of this data here copied into column A, I want to find the minimum and maximum value. So I'm just going to put some labels here. And I get to use this handy little function called min. And there's a similar one for max. So I'm going to do the minimum of A2 to A134. And it pops up for me right there. And right here, it's the same thing, but with max. A2 to A134. OK? So next thing I want to look at is the range. And the range is always the difference between these two numbers. So I'm going to set this equal to this cell minus this cell. Now when I do things this way, um, we're going to see that we have automatic calculations happening for us when I reference cells instead of just typing in their numbers. Um, after I look at the range, I want to put something for the number of bins. Okay, We're just going to start with a, a value of 10 bins. We can choose whatever we want here. Now what I need to do is I need to know the width of the bins. So the bin width is going to equal the range of my data. This is how wide my data is overall. And I'm going to divide it by my number of bins. So again, I'm going to reference these so that um, calculations are performed automatically if I change the number of bins here. So this is going to be equal to the range divided by number of bins. Okay, And there's my bin width. Now, I want to show you a handy little trick in Google Spreadsheets. Um, in some spreadsheet programs, if you start a pattern like this, and then you come through and drag, it'll automatically fill it in for you. But Google Docs doesn't do that. It thinks you mean take the value from the one you're dragging from and fill it in for the rest. So we want to um, do things a little differently in order to count here. I'm going to put a 1 in the first cell here. And then this cell right here, I'm going to set it equal to the cell that came before it plus 1. Okay? And so we get a 2 out of that. Now when I drag down right here, let's see what happens. I get a 3. That's because it's looking at C9, which is right here, the cell that came before. I'm looking at the equation up here. Um, it's looking at C9 and adding 1 to it. So we get 3. And when I drag down, it's going to just keep coming down and following the same pattern. Look at the one that came before, add 1, etc. We're going to use this concept right here to define our bins. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to do, um, I need to start with my minimum value right here. So I'm going to set this cell equal to um, C2. Okay. And in this next cell right here, I'm going to set this equal to um, the cell that came before plus this bin width right here. Now when I drag this, we're going to see that there's a little problem. If I drag it down, I get the same answer again. And let's see what happened. If I drag it again, uh, I get 125, uh, 127. OK, this is looking weird. What's going on? If I look at this right here, it's doing E2 plus C6. That's what I asked for right here. The one that came before E2 plus C6, this number over here. If I come down, it's doing E3, that which came before, plus C7. There's nothing right here. I don't want it to go down and count these. I want it to add the same bin width every time. So somehow I need to tell it to not move that number when I drag this. I want it to move the other numbers. I want it to move 
um, these E's because I need to look at what came before to add again, but I don't want it to move the bin width. And here's how you take care of that. This is in C6 right here, right? So if I come back here and I put dollar signs on my C6 like so, that means now wherever I drag this, it's not going to change. This is always going to be looking at C6. I could drag it left, right, up, down, and uh, that won't change. But the E's will change because they don't have dollar signs. So if I drag this down, we should be getting what we want now. Okay? What happened? So C6, C6, yeah, looks good. So for example, this one right here, we are in cell E8. And what does the formula say? It says look at E7 and add what's in C6. Okay, there's E7 and C6. So I'm going forward by this much every time. I've now defined my bins. Okay, oops. The next thing that I want to do is I want to start counting what falls in these bins. So, for example, oh, let's just label these to make life uh, a little bit easier. So here's where my counts go. What I want to do is I want to count how many of these values from my original data fall between 119 and 124. I'm going to use something called the filter function. And this thing is pretty nifty. I'm going to filter through all of that original data, A2 to A134. And let me just copy this right here because I'm going to need it again in a second. A2 to A134. And I'm going to find um, A2 to A134, all of those values that are greater than or equal to this number right here. So I click and there we go. Now that's not the only condition that I want. I also want to look for all of the numbers that are less than the upper bound of my bin right here. So I'm going to paste that range in again and say that this should be less than this stuff. Okay. Now if I evaluate this function, let's see what happens. Okay. It went through all of my original data right here and it found all of those numbers that fit those two conditions that I typed in. But I don't really want to look at all of these numbers right here. What I really want is the count of them. Okay. So I need to count and I'm just going to put a count function on the outside of all of this. Now this looks pretty crazy. That's why I built it up from the inside out. So first we're filtering through the data, finding the values that fall between these two points, and then I'm going to count all of that. Okay, And there it is. There's 72 data points that are falling between here and here. So what's next? Well, let's drag this and see what happens. Okay. Looks like we've got something going on, but let's take a look at the equation right here. Notice that this says A3 to A135. I don't like that. A3 to A135 means that it's starting at this data point, which means it's skipping that one, and it's going all the way down to A135, which doesn't even have a data point in it. I can't even go lower on this uh, sheet. So that means that I need to put um, these absolute references in here. I need to fix this. I need to come back and I need to put the dollar signs where I don't want stuff to move. So I don't want these things to move right here. However, I want E2 and E3 to move because E2 and E3, that's defining the range that I'm counting the values in between. So let's take a look at what happens now. If I stretch this down a few, um, I come to this one, A2 to A134 is still there. But um, E3 and E4 is what I'm looking at now. There's E3 and E4. That's what I want. It moved on to look at the numbers between these next two bins. Okay? And so if, I, if I'm stretching this all the way down, um, we see that there's a point where we reach all zeros. That's because I've gone past my maximum value. So how many values are there that are 177 over in this? There's none because uh, my max value was only 172. That's why these are all zeros. But let's take a look at what we've gained from linking everything up now in this spreadsheet. If I change this number over here, 10, if I change it to be 20 bins, this should automatically update all this stuff for me. Look what it did. It updated the bin width. It changed these values here. And this automatically updated. And now what I can do is I can go and I can use these counts right here to plot a histogram. And 
Unfortunately, Google Docs doesn't have any good ways of doing a histogram. It's just going to do a bar chart for us. But we can use these um, to plot one by hand or any other tool that you like.